Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 155 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you today from YouTube. If you have been watching the live streams today, thank you very much for tuning in. You have made it to um, the third and final video of the day, which is a classic choice. I don't do enough of these classic videos. I should do more and more because they're usually the ones that get the most interaction going because they tend to be fragrances that at least some of you, usually a lot of you, have smelt before. First comment for this one goes to Audrey saying hello. David is saying hi again. Olfacto file is still around. Thank you very much. Sylvia says hi. Angela's still around. And Flaconess says hello again from Germany. Rachel says, oh my God, this is the ultimate animalic. It's literally the badger's... <laughs> okay. It's not literally that, Rachel, but we'll go we'll go with the um, with the metaphor if you like. Hello from Toronto says LB Ah Hermes says Tina. Okay, we're going to keep this video nice and brief. The classic choice for today and the first classic choice actually of 2021. Send some suggestions through though uh, as well for which classic choice um, sense you might like me to do. Uh, I have done a few in the past, but I'll try and collate them and, uh, and 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 see if I've got them in my collection. Fracas says David Santiago. I don't have a vintage of Fracas, but I've got I've got a a, a recent-ish bottle. Anyway, this is this is Eau d'Hermes from surprisingly enough Dior. No, from, from Hermes. There is a Dior connection though, because this was composed by Edmond Rudnitska, who of course did so many of the truly truly iconic uh, Dior's. Uh, back in you know, decades ago. This was the first uh, perfume uh, from Hermes, from 1951. You must be joking, this morning I made, I made an order, you ordered, you ordered that this morning, from where? Fantastic! As in, you ordered another bottle, a Sotir, or, or, um, or, or it's the first time you're ordering it. I would imagine you, you've probably smelt this before. Uh, Edmund Rudnitska, for the few of you who don't, who may not be aware, um, is the man uh, to whom we we owe gratitude for Eau Sauvage, uh, Giorissimo, um, <laughs> my mind has gone blank, but it, it, he did poison, says David Santiago. No, 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 no. Edmund Rudnitska didn't do the original poison. Uh, and uh, what was the one? The Parfum de Thérèse for Frédéric Malle. Um, there's definitely one more iconic Dior, isn't there? Then my mind has gone completely blank. This is really bad. Probably the greatest perfumer of all time. And my mind has gone blank on him. But never mind. You can, you can, um, you can, um, you can look him up. Uh, I bought this a few years ago, okay? So it's it's not a, it's not a vintage uh, bottle by any means. Moustache from Rochas, yes, thank you very much, absolutely. Um, but somebody here saying, I had copper copper cap back along, crazy skanky. I ah, see, I didn't know that copper, copper cap meant that it's a little bit older. Um, I'm going to spray it now. For those of you, Miss Dior... Miss Dior, Miss Dior isn't Edmund Rudnitska. Pretty sure Miss Dior wasn't. But Diorella may have been. We need to stop guessing and um, just look him up before I get myself into real trouble with the with the proper serious perfume aficionados. Um, Eau d'Hermes. What's fascinating about Eau d'Hermes is that nowadays I think it reads as... <sighs> it's so good. And I... Um, Femme de Rochas, yes, of course, thank you very much. Considered by many, many perfumers to be one of the, the greatest perfume ever made. A lot of perfumers uh, say that they seem to go either for Cotis Chypre as being the greatest perfume ever made, or Gala Mitsuko, or the original uh, Femme de Rochas by Rudnitska, um, or, or Chypre, of course. Um, I deliberately didn't smell this before today's broadcast because I thought, no, 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 let's let's um, let's just let's just keep it as a surprise. But I saw the the the, the packaging in in my collection. I thought, oh, that'll be a good one for a classic one. Now, in terms of its structure, I guess you'd have to say that it's it, it's actually kind of a, a cologne, really, because it has got a very very strong pronounced. Let's just show it off a little bit better. It's got a pronounced um, citrus note obviously at the top, which is where citrus notes tend to be. Um, 
and it's uh, very, very herbal, in that kind of stewed herb and vegetable way that um, seems to be a hallmark of Rudnitzka's. Um, but it also has this ginormous, you know, really, really huge civet note. I mean, it's, it's, it is on the verge of too fecal. Um, but it, it works. And in that sense, it reminds me of Jiki. I mean, I suppose if somebody, somebody else may actually say that we ought to count this as a fougere as well, but I think it's the fact that it's so citrusy at the top that makes me think of 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 um, co more cologne-like structures. I mean, somebody would come along and say the fact that it is that animalic uh, completely takes it out of cologne territory anyway. Um, so it makes me think of Jiki with how uh, animalic it is, but it's 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 not as soft as Jiki. It's not as rounded as Jiki, and it's it's definitely more leathery. Okay, so I think. The idea for this perfume was for it to tie in with the the, the the leather work, the leather production, the leather products of Hermès. And I think the idea was for it to be the smell of the inside of, of an Hermès handbag, a leather handbag. And I suppose Rudnitska thought that by introducing this fecal animalic note, um, he would be spelling leather in the perfume. Uh, somebody's saying here, civet does wonders to compositions, especially how it highlights florals. Yes, and it, it, it is a civet note, okay? So it's a really, really fecal civet note. Is this a current formulation, says Memory Flow? I think this bottle must be about six or seven years old, but I don't know if, if it's been changed since then. And also, it seems to be an Hermès that isn't always easiest to, easy to get. I think it's on the website, but you have to spend a bit of time looking for it on the website. Um, a few more comments here. I had this copper top bottle of Eau d'Hermès and liked it. Looking for a new bottle, says Vetti Verfreak. I had no idea that this actually meant that it's a, a bit older. Sorry. Uh, what note do you think makes it animalic, says LB? Absolutely the civet. Uh, Keo says, does it feel too sassy? Um, no. What does it feel like, actually? It, it feels, even though it is really, really strongly animalic. It manages to stay just on the right side of, of those sorts of, you know, filthy, dirty notes. And to me, it actually smells quite sophisticated. Um, I'd started saying a few minutes ago, didn't I, that this nowadays, if it were released today, if, some, if you could imagine something like this being released today, I'm sure it would read as quite um, masculine. But what's interesting is that it's always actually been sold as a unisex perfume. And so it's it's, it's fascinating that a brand as as mainstream as, as Hermès would have created something as animalic as this uh, and been quite happy to market it uh, at both women and men. So it, it shows how um, tastes and fashions for wearing perfume and, and what we kind of consider culturally and socially acceptable um, have changed a lot. Um, because I, I really think a brand would struggle to market this as, as feminine now, because it, it is just too civity. But it comes across, it comes across as sophisticated, maybe in a, maybe in a slightly dour way. I mean, the, the, there is a seriousness to it, okay? This isn't a perfume of speed and dynamism. This is definitely a sort of perfume of if you you know if you've got a fire in the house which which we haven't but you know a, a cold evening and you you you've pulled up to the fire uh, and you're you're sort of cradling a glass of i don't know brandy or whiskey or something um and you really want to shut out the rest of the world and you want to slow down the pace of everything um but it's 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 definitely, it's, it's, it's a good sort of old world refinement, okay? So you walk into an interior and you think, oh gosh, this doesn't look as though it's been redecorated since, you know, the dark ages, but actually you kind of don't mind because that is its charm. Maybe what I'm saying is that it feels very much of its era, but I wouldn't want Hermès to mess with it at all. Um, 
because it's 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 very very special, really really special, and so potent, so striking, and it does the thing that Edmond Rudnitska himself always said a great perfume should do, which is that initially it should it should elicit a shock, it should initiate a kind of shock, not necessarily a negative shock, but just the sensation of smelling something and going, oh wow, what the hell is that, and. And you absolutely do that with Odermes. I'm going to get to the comments from you in a, in a moment, and then we'll finish off. But just to read the blurb that's on uh, this on on the website, it's very very short. It says, created in 1951 by Edmond Rudnitska, Odermes explores a citrusy, spicy floral theme and is the house's original fragrance. Spicy, yes, hot spices, you know, so cloves, nutmeg, pepper, those sorts of spices. It draws inspiration from the idea of a magical, deeply sensory aroma, the inside of an Hermès bag where the scent of a perfume lingered. A note of fine leather wrapped in fresh trails of citrus fruit seasoned with spices was how the perfumer composer described it at the time. A historical novel inspired by the tradition and culture of Hermès, it appeals to both men and women. I wonder if it does today. Powerful, sensual, the classic collection bears witness to the initial encounters between the house of Hermès and fragrance. The scents tell the story of the living heritage, etc., etc. It doesn't actually tell you very much more, really. So let me go back to your comments. Uh, what are people saying about it? Because I was wondering how many of you have tried it. Eric says, I've walked into my local boutique and they mentioned they hide this tester as no one enjoys it. I think it's so elegant from a foot away. Interesting, interesting. Vetti Verfreak, it's at least 10 years old. Bottle design changed at least two times since then. Scent changed too. Now there's more cumin instead of civet. So I wonder if it just happened to be... Um, if it happened to have been sticking around in the shop for quite a while when I bought it. So maybe I just got lucky. Um, cumin instead of civet is is quite a different, creates a different effect because cumin, especially on skin, of course, smells sweaty and that's very different from fecal and funky. Civet conveys a very, very special quality. Tomasz says, hello from Upper Silesia in Poland. What terribly snowy weather out there. I nearly got stuck in deeper snow and I nearly missed your live event. Well, watch out. Look, look out for the snow. What does Madame Persilais think? Yeah, I... I <laughs> If ever, if ever I spray Jiki, she says that's got that poo stuff in it, hasn't it? But I, th I think she may go along with Eric that it's 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 okay from a distance. Um, Angela says I've definitely smelled some shocking scents. Gavin says I need to smell this. Diorella is lost. I had no idea this even existed. Says Memory Flow. Well, there you go. The first perfume from from Hermes. You need to try and try and get a hold of it. Land of Nothingness says maybe the civet is in fact part of the leather note. Absolutely, I think it's totally is, and I think it's totally meant to be. And Kim says animalic scents are coming back, marketed to women, thankfully. Interesting, interesting. In that regard, it would be interesting to find out what the new Tom Ford tuberose smells like. It's called nude tuberose. And of course, tuberose can be very animalic as well. So let's watch this space and let's see if we get any animalic feminine perfumes this year. But that's us done. Eau d'Hermès is the classic choice. If you've watched all of the lives today, thank you very much for tuning in. But if you've just watched this recording, thank you very much as well. Next video, in case you're not aware, is actually in two days' time. So Monday evening, same time. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is the same time. Just just see the, um, the notification in the community tab. That's going to be a live interview with Remy and Valérie Pulveray, the founders of Les Indemodables. I'm really excited about that one because that should be a fascinating interview. Anyway, you be good and look after yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye now.